right, um, welcome to another day in paradise. Uh, today's mission, I'm going to try and uh, work out what to do with these rear axles. Um, obviously, uh, I've got to have a Tesla inner to go into the Tesla box and a Toyota outer to go into the Toyota hubs. Uh, and it's a matter of working out um, the best solution in terms of strength and uh, axle length to accommodate for suspension travel, um, etc. So that's the plan for today. I've gathered a few bits and pieces together and hopefully today I can get it uh, worked out and get a plan underway to um, get these axles done. Alright, let's get into it. Alright, so uh, on the bench here I've gathered some bits and pieces. Um, over here we have our mm, shovel handle axles. Um, they've got no CV joints on them and um, no splines on them so they're no good for anything. Um, basically use these to mock up the position of the motor in the back of the car. So that's that. So um, we're not going to use them. Here I have the rear axles out of the Tesla. Uh, they have a very, very, very fat um, input shaft or to the, it goes into the um, Tesla box. Quite fat, although when it comes down to the axle, they are a little bit skinnier. I will measure them. Um, so yeah, they've gone really fat there, quite skinny in the axle axle, and then the outer spline here for the original Tesla is also quite fat. So I'm not quite sure if there's a reason behind that, because you would expect the axle to be the weak point. Who knows, but um, um, I'm wanting something super strong and reliable um, as an end result so that um, it, I won't ever have to think about it breaking. So yeah, a CV joint on that end, a CV joint on that side, that one's a, pl a plunging joint to allow for suspension movement. So that's cool. This over here was, was one axle that was in my uh, grey M2 over there with the V6 turbo on it. Uh, that is a Mitsubishi axle. It's got a Mitsubishi engine in it. Um, and I was showing off and um, showing off my um, trans brake system for the auto that's in it. Um, and I done a launch and it um, snapped like a twig. So this is a shortened axle. Um, and it's been sleeved pressed, sleeved and welded and of course it broke and if you can see that it broke right where the weld ended which is pretty typical for welding um, I got this one remade um, out of chrome molly from a guy and um, it was a good price and it was a good product and it was bulletproof and it's, it's bulletproof so uh, whatever I'm doing, it will not be anything like this. Um, it will be um, the proper deal. A one piece axle um, to be made that will have the correct splines on each end to do the job. So that's a no go. Alright, and as for CV joints, um, the little MRS here has a very. Um, small outer CV joint uh, with an axle diameter going into it of about oh, I can't remember, 24 millimeters or something it's um, pretty tiny it's the size of my sort of thumb you know it's ridiculous um, I'm sure it wouldn't be able to hack it but Toyota being Toyotas um, and doing a bit of research around the place um, I've come up with a few possible solutions um, this is this is the solution I'm going to try and work with, this outer CV joint here. I did have a few other ones that I've been playing with. I've got a few, a selection. So one there, some there, some there. Um, luckily I can return all these. But um, these joints are various to other ones. I may or may not have to use them yet if the other one on the other bench doesn't work out. But they have various different sizings of axles going into them um, but the 
this. This is the one I want to try. This one over here. So this is a CV joint for a Toyota. It is a CV105627. It has the same outer spline and set up for the hub, for the original MRS to MR2 hub. Um, it has the correct spline, spline count. The main boss there is the correct size. I haven't fitted it in properly yet, but I've just stuck it in the outside and it slots in. But the good news about it is on the inside, it has a massive ability to hold a massive axle. This is a, I think it's a 30.2 millimeter axle and, <clears throat> excuse me, um, 27 spline. Um, it's big, it's even bigger than uh, these splines on this one here for the V6 turbo. So um, I'm going to see if this can go in and we can work with it. Um, I'm just worried about the physical size of it, it's quite a bit bigger. Um, it also has it also has this uh, ring dust shield type thing on it that may or may not have to be popped off to uh, fit in there. But we'll find out, so let's get into it. Car's going to hoist wheels up, so this is our uh, big CV joint, as you can see, it's a perfect fit, spline wise, so we'll see what happens uh, on the other side. Alright, we're under the car, we'll see if this is going to fit in, now this joint, I don't know if I said it before or not, but this joint's off a, possibly a Camry, a V6 Camry. Um, some funny crazy old Japanese import van so it's also a few different models and makes but I've given you the CV joint number so um, if anybody's sort of doing anything like this uh, conversion that needs a strong CV look up that number I'm sure no matter what part of the world you're in it'll work out so I'll put that in there okay uh, it's in, but I don't believe it's in all the way. Oh yeah, okay, I can see that. I don't know if you're about to see that or not, but the, the little dust shield around here is just hitting on this part of the hub. The part of the hub where the uh, ABS sensor used to go in. So, I'll take that little dust shield off and we'll try again. As easy as that. Okay, <clears throat> dust shield's off. And uh, what I've done is I've just put a little blob of blue grease on that area there, so that when I poke it in, I know that it's uh, sitting in its full home position. So let's try this first time. It feels like it's home. It fits in there quite nicely. Ah, uh, that's better. Now we've got the spline coming almost all the way to the out of the hub, which is more like it. It is perfect. Have room around it for a boot still. It doesn't hit on anything. That's the closest point there. And I'll pull it out and make sure that our little grease spot is being flattened. And yep, there's some grease just there. So we've got a perfect CV joint, big fat axle, big fat axle, fits in the car perfectly, nice. Rightio, next step is dealing with these uh, big boys. Uh, now normally I would pull the boots off this side here, clean everything up, um, so I can work with it, see, what it, see how the thing is travelling. But these stiff, sort of quite stiff, plasticky boots 
seem to hold the um, the bearing set up inside it sort of in the central position which is actually quite handy um, so what I might do at this stage is just leave that on because um, it sort of holds it all together in a central position because um, you sort of want to be able to work out uh, when the suspension is going through its travel its um, compression and extension um, that this doesn't bottom out in the bottom here or pop out of the actual joint itself and because it's too short so I'll leave it the boot on it's holding it in its central position around about and um, but what I am going to do is I will take the clip off this end here so that I can poke it in and out of the uh, Tesla box um, without it clicking into place and having to um, wedge it out every time I need to pull the axle out so I take the clip off the end and then it can be removed and installed as many times as I want easily cool let's do it Now some of that might have looked a bit brutal, um, unfortunately initially uh, sometimes you can hit them off with a hammer, just bang them off and they pop out, 50% um, of the time they will, 50% of the time they won't, in this case it didn't, um, so I had to be a bit brutal as you saw, um, involved um, cutting the cage around the CV joint, removing the balls and then slicing the center section into three pieces to sort of separate it and then as you saw it finally come off um, yeah normally I don't like doing it like that but sometimes you haven't got a choice um, so yeah now we'll see what happens with the length of all this awesome all right so uh, we've got that uh, sitting in the transmission there as you can see it's obviously too long here's a side view so we will have to uh, chop it down a bit, obviously, which we're planning to. But what I'm going to do um, now is I am actually going to remove the strut, take the spring off it, so that uh, when we come to the time, uh, we can make it go up and down for its uh, suspension travel and work out our perfect uh, optimal uh, length of that axle. So do that now and we'll um, get cracking on that length. Now I don't recommend doing this uh, like the way I'm going to do it. I have got some spring compressors down there, but um, I can't be bothered. Um, this has got some TRD springs in it. They're lowered and they've only got a little bit of tension on them, so I should be able to just undo it and not uh, kill myself. <coughs> You'll be the witness. <coughs> Look at that. And uh, lop the end of it off on the cutoff saw. And um, hopefully that will be a short enough to get us in the ballpark of where we need to be for this um, experiment. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Okay, so uh, right, I've quickly slapped this together. Uh, no spring on our strut. I've got a um, jack here ready to jack the suspension up for its travel. I have the axles are all in. Sorry, it's so dark. Um, I've chopped this axle shorter. It's uh, shorter, and I've, what I've done is I've just put a little hose clip on there, um, just to try and finalise the position that needs to be in. The axle itself is maybe sort of halfway-ish in the plunging joint. So we're going to see how we go, we're going to jack it up for its suspension travel, make sure everything clears, work out uh, what's our optimum length and the big question I was talking about last time was uh, this little, I don't know if you can see it there, there's a little, there's a little cut out in the chassis there for the axle. So we're going to see if that's uh, going to interfere with that. So we'll jack it up, see what happens.
All right, okay, we just started to lift the car off the hoist at that point there, so we must be pretty close to our full compression. I would imagine it's sitting on the bump stop up there. And we're all good in terms of clearance. We've got uh, 20 millimeters of clearance there still. Our axle hasn't bound up. Jesus, that fell off the hoist. Um, so yeah, suspension is pushed right up. Okay, so we're good in terms of clearance. Now it's just a matter of working out the optimum length of that axle. Um, we're using that hose clip to sort of secure it into a position. We'll see how we go. I put it up and down for its suspension travel, checking the um, length of the axle in every position. And um, the axle only seems to move, um, only probably for its suspension travel, probably about 10 millimeters. It shortens and lengthens as it goes for its travel. So there's, there's uh, not much happening, which is good. Um, um, but the, uh, and when it hits the bump stop at the top, um, we still have clearance around the top of the chassis um, where the little notch was cut out for the axle relief, and that's fine. So we're not going to run into issues there of the axle ever hitting the chassis. Um, and what I've also done is I have, um, for the plunging joint, I have um, opted to put the axle sort of in to the plunging joint further um, rather than halfway or out to the edge. It's sort of halfway-ish but in a little bit further um, because for some reason it's just a little pet thing of mine. Um, I think the CV joint itself, the casing, is stronger on its inner point because um, that's where all the base of it is. Um, whether it makes a difference or not, I don't know. But in this position here, with the axle sort of maybe two thirds of the way in, so the plunging joint, I still have plenty of movement uh, in and out before it bottoms out. Oh, that's hard to do. So um, that's our recipe for our axle. I'll pull it all apart, um, strip this joint off, and uh, take it down to my guy and get him to make me two axles. Um, the same. Um, what I might have to do is just check this axle in this side. It should be the same because I put this gearbox uh, in the center of the car, so the two axles should be the same. I'll double check with that um, before I go too much further. And um, get them to make the two axles, and uh, that will be the car axled up, ready to go. Awesome. All right, I think I might call it quits there. This is just a quickie. Um, this is how I do axles. And I'm glad I found a, a CV joint um, for the car that accepts a fat axle. Um, anybody else that's doing a high-powered MRS, MR2 conversion, uh, it's probably good, good to know what that joint is. And um, so you can uh, use it for any of your projects and um, not be worried about snapping anything. So that's cool. All right, I'll um, rip it into that side there and I think we'll sign off here. You've seen it all before, no point showing you again. And uh, we'll call it quits. Awesome. All right, see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.